As I walked from the temple and saw my family, I felt so happy. I had just been sealed to a worthy and righteous priesthood holder. I made the right choice. I've prepared my whole life for this experience. The spirit I felt as we knelt at the altar helped me to know that all my choices and trials had prepared me for this moment. Hello, I'm Michelle King. Behind me is the construction site of the Bountiful Temple, and in less than two years when this building is completed, it will be dedicated by a prophet of God as a holy temple, and as a house of the Lord, it will be one of the most sacred spots on earth. Pretty amazing that such a special building is just down the street from where we live. The construction of this and many other temples around the world has probably created some questions in your minds, questions that can and should be discussed with you. And as your questions are answered tonight, we hope that you'll allow the Spirit to help you understand so that when you leave this fireside, you can leave with a greater desire to experience the eternal blessings that await you inside the house of the Lord. What's done in the temple besides baptisms for the dead? How are bad people kept out of the temple? What does the temple clothing stand for? How many temples are there now in the world? We're about to be married. Why couldn't I go to the temple before now? Why do we have temples? Um, I think we have temples to perform work that needs to be done for those that have died. And also so we can go and be still to our families for eternity. Um, I think probably the most important reason why we go to the temple is so that we can get our endowments taken out and perform the ordinances that we need to make it to the celestial kingdom. We have always had temples, and at times when there weren't any, the Lord took prophets to secluded mountaintops to give them instruction. The temple is so important that we have 45 temples in the world, and more are being built all the time so that people all over the world can have these opportunities. To get back to our Heavenly Father's presence, we need to give certain answers to the angels. Those are learned in the temple. We also need to have certain ordinances to reach the highest degree of the celestial kingdom and the presence of the Father. Is the Salt Lake Temple the only temple with a Holy of Holies room? The Holy of Holies is a room in the temple that is set aside for prayer and contemplation by the Lord's prophets. It is the most sacred place in the temple. In the Salt Lake Temple, a room is permanently set aside as the Holy of Holies. It's next to the Celestial Room. Each of the other temples has regularly used rooms that can be used as a Holy of Holies as needed. Where do we get names for doing temple work for the dead? They have different people, um, gene the people who are called them, like, or genealogists who go to the different places, like to England or places like that, and they get the names and bring them back, and then um, they go through a long process of entering names into computers and on cards, and then they're finally sent to the temple to have their work done for them. Besides the name extraction program, each of us can search out the names of our own ancestors and submit them to the temple for ordinance work. By doing this, we can help link families together as part of Heavenly Father's plan. What happens when someone does baptism for the dead unworthily? I think that um, the person you're doing it for wouldn't um, be punished for your sins, you know what I mean? Because they still, you know, they still have, I think they would still receive the blessings, but I think I receive blessings when I go and do baptisms for the dead, and I think you wouldn't be worthy of receiving those, those blessings like the spirit you feel, or the blessings you receive for doing the work. Um, first of all, I think if you're not worthy to do, to do them, you shouldn't even be there in the first place. And if you do, you're going to be held responsible for them. And no one might know, not know, no one won't, will know right now, but someday you'll be held accountable for it. A temple ordinance for the dead performed by someone who is unworthy will be valid if it is accepted by the deceased person. But the person who does the work unworthily will be held accountable. What is meant by washing and anointing? 
Washing and anointing is a temple ordinance that symbolizes physical and spiritual cleansing. I've heard about temple endowments. What are they? Um, I think it's an ordinance where, or a holy rite, that we're allowed to make covenants with the Lord and receive spiritual blessings and make promises that we'll do certain things like keep ourselves worthy and be charitable and do the things that the Lord would have us do. And in return, we receive blessings and the ability to go to the celestial kingdom and do the Lord's will. Um, I don't really know exactly what it is. I do know, though, that um, like in genealogy work and family history, that it must be important because it's something that's required for all people that have died. Um, and so I would assume it would be covenants that need to be made and promises that need to be made or something to be ordered so that people can progress. Oh. Um, I've heard that it's... Uh, a step that we, that has to be taken before we can reach the celestial kingdom, just like baptism. The endowment is a series of sacred promises made with the Lord. Those covenants are made during a two-hour presentation, teaching of the world's creation and man's progress from birth until he re-enters the Lord's presence. Do you do the same things in the temple every time you return? I think there's a lot of work to be performed in the temple and like my, my dad goes and works in the temple every Saturday and but sometimes I'll go with him and when I go with him he will come and baptize me instead of going through the regular session. So I think you can probably kind of choose and the temple workers do different things than the people who are going through. You might do the same thing that you've done before but you might experience it in a different way or you might you might be given different feelings and sensations about, about uh, different understandings about eternal life and the things we, we need to do here. So I don't think it'd be a, an exact same experience any time you'd go. The first time you attend the temple, you do the ordinances for yourself. After that, you do the work for someone who has died. Ordinances for the living and for the dead are the same. I've done baptisms for the dead in the temple. What else is done there? I don't, I think all I know is that people go through, even after they've had their endowments taken out, um, they go through for um, inspiration, for peace. Um, I don't know why or what they do, but it's a source of renewal. Yeah. In the temple, members of the church do saving ordinances for those who have died without those blessings. Those ordinances are priesthood ordinations, washings and anointings, endowments, and sealings of families. What is the celestial room? I imagine the celestial room is a, a room that symbolizes possibly perfection and possibly it symbolizes the, um, the full progression and the, the finish, the end. Well, I've been into a Las Vegas temple before it was dedicated and we went into the slush room and it was it was the biggest of all the rooms that I was in and it was really it was I had the best spirit while I was in there and it it was all white and bright and you could just feel the spirit the most in that room and it uh, reached perfection and that's what it seemed like to me that was. The celestial room is where the endowment is completed. Entering that beautiful and peaceful room symbolizes entry in the presence of God, the final stage in life's journey. After the temple ceremony, it is a place for quiet contemplation and prayer. What is the special temple clothing for? Um, I know they wear all white, and I would think that that would stand for purity. The special white clothing worn in the temple symbolizes cleanliness, modesty, and purity. It serves as a reminder of many of the things taught in the temple, and when everyone is dressed alike, they appear equal in the sight of the Lord. Why do my mom and dad wear temple garments? Well, garments signify, represent the covenants you've made, and when you receive your endowments, those special gifts from God, it's important that you do something to represent your commitment 
and I think part of it is for protection against sin and against the temptations of the world. I've heard stories, you know, where people have been in accidents and they've been injured everywhere except where their garments were covering, and I think that's part of the blessings. Garments are also so you, you can always remember who you are. If you always have a garment on, you're not going to want to go out and do something that's not wrong. I mean, that realize that you're a member of this church and that's who you are. Why can I go through the temple before it's dedicated and not after? To me, before a temple is dedicated, it's just a beautiful building. Um, because, you know, but then when it's dedicated, it becomes the house of the Lord, which makes it, which makes it much different. And so before we can go through, you know, just, we can go through the building, but um, when it becomes, I think when, you know, it officially becomes the house of the Lord, then it becomes much more sacred. Until it's dedicated, a temple is just a beautiful building. But once the dedicatory prayer is said, the building becomes a sacred place where the spirit and presence of God can dwell unrestrained by worldly influences. If I'm worthy, why can't I go to the temple now? I think it's important that we have a deep testimony of why we're there. If we went now in our teenage years when we're wondering and questioning and and it's kind of spreading our roots as far as what we believe and what it is that we want to stand for. It would be difficult to take out the endowments because we're still searching for everything. I think once we have a testimony, um, we can have a, it can be more rooted and secure in our hearts. All of life's experiences allow us to better understand and appreciate the temple ordinances. And that's why our prophets have counseled that young people should become endowed in the temple just before they enter the mission field. Young women who do not serve a mission go to the temple just before marriage. Others should counsel with their bishops to decide when they should go to the temple. How are unworthy people kept from going into the temple? Well, first of all, to get into the temple you have to have a recommend. So unless you're a member of the church or you have to be worthy to get in it. You have to get it recommended from your bishop. You have, unless you're dishonest with them, that's the only way you can get it recommended is talking to the bishop who will ask you certain questions and make sure that you're worthy. I think um, I've heard in a talk somewhere that like there was a group of people waiting to go through the there was a group of people waiting to go through the temple, and um, the temple workers um, could just feel that there was something not quite right about the group. And after having a prayer and stuff. Um, they mentioned that we just can't go through with this group and um, quietly two people slipped out of the back of the group and left. Apparently they weren't worthy or something. But I think the Spirit of the Lord is really strong there and um, if you're not worthy to be there, granted some people will probably get through but I think the Lord is in control of the things that happen in His house. How do you prepare now to enter the temple someday? I think the way we prepare today to go to the temple is by developing a close relationship with our Heavenly Father and with our elder brother Jesus Christ by praying and reading our scriptures and making the decisions they would have us make. Be morally clean, avoid alcohol, tobacco and other harmful drugs, attend church, associate with friends with high standards, pay your tithing, keep the Sabbath day holy and learn the process of repentance. Basically, do all you can to learn God's commandments and keep them. Are the ordinances in the temple secret? Uh, the place, the temple is a, it's a designated place where God can reveal all the mysteries of heaven and His power. And I think some, there are certain things that are so powerful and so sacred and so holy that, that to take them outside of the temple and discuss them in, in regular order places would be to kind of profane them, those ordinances and those, those um, experiences. And it would be to offend God, I think. I think that part of it is because we don't really understand. And like, I can't go through the temple yet, and I think I'm, I'm not ready. And a lot of the things that go on, I wouldn't understand. And most of the people who haven't been through the temple wouldn't understand that if you just talk about it. And it's, it's very sacred, and it deserves respect. The ordinances are very special. 
The work performed in the temple is sacred and personal. Talking about it outside of a holy setting would tend to make temple work ordinary. Think of the temple ordinances as you do your personal prayers. You wouldn't tell others what you pray about. After we're married, what blessings can we expect from temple attendance? When the Lord gives a commandment, there's always a blessing attached on the other end. And I think temple attendance is a commandment from the Lord. And if we do what He says, then we will receive blessings because He's bound when we do what He says. And so I don't. And I know whenever I go to like do baptisms for the dead, yet there's always there's just a special spirit you feel when you know you're doing the right thing and you know what you're doing what the Lord would have you do, and you you receive peace and understanding. I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. I believe that the feelings that we feel in the temple might be a fraction of what we might feel in heaven if we are worthy when we go to the temple and we feel the right way and stuff like that. I, I, I think the temple is just a, a, an incredible gift and a blessing just to go and have the, just the spirit with you that you can just forget about everything else and just concentrate on doing what the Lord wants you to do. Regular temple attendance helps us to more fully understand the gospel and the eternal plan. President McKay referred to the temple as God's university. It also allows us to learn to serve others and to love our brothers and sisters through that service. We hope that your questions about the temple were answered here tonight, but if you have others, be sure to talk to your bishop, your parents, or your youth leaders, and they'll be able to help you with the answers. The temple really is a place where the Lord can dwell. The granddaughter of church president Lorenzo Snow was alone in the temple one day with her grandfather. He told her, it was right here that the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me at the time of the death of President Woodruff. He stood right here, about three feet above the floor. It looked as though he stood on a plate of solid gold. She says, Grandpa told me what a glorious personage the Savior is, and described his hands, feet, countenance, and beautiful white robes, all of which were of such glory of whiteness and brightness that he could hardly gaze upon him. Then Grandpa said, I want you to remember that this is the testimony of your grandfather, that he told you with his own lips that he actually saw the Savior here in the temple and talked with him face to face. We invite all of you to come unto Christ. Come unto Christ, every nation.